Nike really took away the one element that made the Tampo line special. Did they do the right move? And are they even worth the buying now? Well, that's exactly the question that I want to answer for you guys today. This is my review on the Nike Tampo 10 Elite. And here they are, the Nike Tampo 10. So the first thing that I want to talk about, of course, is going to be the upper. So for the past 20 or so years, Nike has been making the Tampo line out of premium kangaroo leather. This year, they ran into some controversy when they decided to move away from that tradition and move over to their synthetic leather called Fly Touch Plus. Now, Nike does claim this Fly Touch Plus upper is supposed to mimic real leather in every way, shape, or form. And it does do a pretty good job of mimicking real leather, but there are a couple of differences that separate the two. The first being these textiles that they added on top of this upper here. They do add a good amount of grip on the ball, especially when you're playing on artificial grass where the surface tends to be drier. You do notice this grip on there, which you are not going to get from real leather. You're just not going to find any type of grip element or textile element on there. So that's one of the differences between real leather and the synthetic leather. The second difference that I noticed between the synthetic leather and real kangaroo leather is real kangaroo leather has the ability to mold to whatever foot shape you have. That's one of the main reasons why people go after a real kangaroo leather football boot is because the comfort that it provides after it molds to your foot is just superb. Now this does have a good amount of stretch on this midfoot going on to the forefoot here, but it's not gonna have that traditional kangaroo leather stretch and mold to your foot this is going to hold its structure more and it does have a little bit more of that narrow fit i don't know if you guys can sort of tell here but i've worn these for a couple of sessions now i would say in total maybe four or five hours and they do have stretched out a good amount they are fairly comfortable on my foot but they don't have that signature kangaroo leather stretch and feel to it the final difference that i noticed between this synthetic leather and real kangaroo leather is just the overall softness of it as you guys can see this synthetic leather does have a pretty good amount of softness to it but it just honestly doesn't compare to real kangaroo leather if you're after that signature feel of real kangaroo leather for that sensation that it gives you for the ability of it to mold to your foot you're honestly just not going to get it here but i will give nike a ton of props this is a very good take on real leather despite it being fully synthetic so moving on the next thing that i want to talk about is going to be the touch on the ball as you guys can see this upper does have a good amount of thickness to it giving you that padded and pinging sensation when you strike the ball anywhere on the foot and you also do get this grip texture element on here as well that does provide a fair amount of grip I would say on the ball as well so when you receive the ball here or when you're trying to curve the ball with the instep of the foot you do get that nice padding feel as well as this additional grip making for an overall good experience when striking the ball or when receiving the ball when passing honestly I enjoyed the touch on the ball in this synthetic leather it does mimic real leather to some extent but of course it doesn't have that signature leather feel but overall really good touch on the ball you're gonna find that this upper makes it really satisfying when you strike the ball pretty hard it does give you that feedback wherever you strike the ball so it's a, it's a pretty good upper for it being a synthetic leather so big fan of the touch on the ball i would honestly rate it like a eight or eight and a half out of ten it's pretty good i can't complain moving on to the base this is Nike's artificial grass sole plate for the Tiempo. It's not the most aggressive stud pattern out there for artificial grass, but honestly, it does everything you need it to do on an artificial grass pitch. It does give you the ability to twist and pivot with no issue. It does have a good amount of traction due to these smaller studs here and the two studs in the front. You do get a nice push off you don't really get that super responsive sole plate 
as you guys can see it does have a decent amount of snack bag but nothing like you would find on a speed boot or anything like that but it, it's a fairly good soap plate it's not exceptional it's nothing groundbreaking but it does everything you need it to do on an artificial grass pitch so moving on here are the tempo 10 elite on feet i am wearing these in my usual us size 7 and the fit and length is just right for me they do run just a little bit long about a half a nail long nothing crazy not not a big problem for me if you want the closest most tightest fit you can maybe go down half a size but for the average consumer going true to size would be the way to go as to comfort these boots are fairly on the comfortable side if you have super wide feet these boots might not be for you as you can see here these do run more on the narrow side here throughout the midfoot if you have overly excessive wide feet on this part you might find some discomfort you can see it with over time they're going to keep on stretching but i honestly highly doubt it this is one of the trade-offs that you get with the synthetic leather opposed to real kangaroo leather real kangaroo leather would just mold to your foot with no restrictions however this synthetic leather is going to keep most of its shape throughout the life of the boot which you can honestly say it's a good or a bad thing however you want to see it but the comfort is really good i have no complaints in terms of how these fit and feel on my feet and that's honestly one of the positives that you can take away with these football boots is that they are actually pretty comfortable despite them being synthetic so overall fit and comfort on these get a plus for me and i have no complaints all right so the next point that i wanted to touch on was going to be the lockdown on this boot the lockdown is okay it does what it needs to it's nothing special nothing groundbreaking or anything like that because this boot does have more of that narrow fit and the upper doesn't stretch as much as other type of materials it does do a good a job of keeping your foot in place and nice and secure um so i didn't have any trouble with the lockdown i feel like it could be a tiny bit better but for the most part you're not gonna find any issues with the lockdown as far as the responsiveness of the sole plate is not the most aggressive stud pattern out there for artificial grass but again it does everything you need it to do it gives you that ability to twist and pivot so overall the lockdown and responsiveness is solid it, it does what it needs to do you're not going to have any complaints with it does it do it better than other boots out there no but listen it does what it needs to all right guys so in conclusion if you're after that signature kangaroo leather feel and comfort you're not going to quite get that from the tempo 10 i would honestly suggest just going after a real kangaroo leather football boot um, however, if you could get past that this is a uh, synthetic leather and you decide to give these a try, you're going to be pleasantly surprised to find out that these are actually a pretty good fall bubble. They do a lot of things right. The comfort is good. The touch on the ball is pleasantly good. The additional grip from the, from the textiles is pretty good as well. So they definitely do a lot of things right. However, would I pay retail for these? Honestly, probably not. I would honestly go something for like the GX2 or the Vapor 15 Elite. I think those are better football boots than this. However, if you can pick these up on sale, like 50% off or something like that, I would definitely consider giving them a try. They would be a good boot to have in your rotation. But that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys found some information on this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. It would definitely help the video out a lot. And go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any soccer-related content. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.